Thanks for joining me today. This is going to be a follow-up video of the video I did on what tools do I carry in a truck. This is going to be what supplies and parts do I keep in the truck. I carry quite a bit of things here. My truck's a little older, takes a little bit more TLC, and plus it helps keep me out of the shop and keep my costs down while I'm out on the road. I obviously have way more parts and, and tools here that I keep at home that aren't necessary to carry in the truck, but I just thought I'd go through some things here and maybe I'll pick up on, on an idea of something you could carry along the to uh, help yourself out. Before we get started here today, I'd just like to take a second and, and ask you to uh, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. It really helps the channel out. It helps grow this thing. I get a ton of views and a ton of watch time on this channel, but my, my subscriptions are kind of lacking. So if you can help me out with that, I really appreciate it. I have some big ideas of things I want to do on this channel, but it, it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of support and, and uh, a lot of money. So. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but we'll get there with, with your help. So thanks for that. So let's get started here today. Um, I took everything out of my truck, as I said in the last video, and we'll just go through it all here, one by one. Um, where should we start here? All right. This uh, food grade silicone, a tube of food grade silicone. This is for like uh, if somebody s scrapes the walls inside my reefer trailer. Uh, a lot of places are picky on what you can use and having odors in the trailer. This food grade silicone foots the bill just nice if you need to uh, fill a, a, a scrape or a scratch or a hole or something in the in the chem light until you can get it fixed properly, get a patch on it. I've seen these Gojo towels before for cleaning up after I work on, a, on something there. <clears throat> Fuel filters, I carry about half dozen of these at all times, especially in the winter time and make sure I don't run low because if you get in, uh, situation where filter plugs or gels up or something you need to be able to to change that also I always make sure I have about a gallon of of uh, fuel in my side box at all times to uh, go ahead and change that filter with You've probably seen I oh I also have a video on how to change that filter if you need it I uh, run a bypass oil filtration system so I carry a couple extra bypass filters with me here Um, first of all, we'll just go through some of this stuff here. I carry some extra gear oil. This is this gear oil is good for the rear differentials and the front hubs. It's 7590 synthetic. I carry a couple of these. I'm just showing you one. <clears throat> My power steering fluid happens to be uh, it's automatic transmission fluid. Dex 3, I think, is the standard. Dexron, Dexron 3. So this foots the bill right here. It's a uh, Synthetic automatic transmission fluid. Um, keep some battery terminal spray in case I need to clean up my battery terminals or something. I carry two extra crankcase oil filters. My truck takes two, so I carry two. Also, have the wrench for that. Obviously, everybody carries some extra windshield wash. I just carry a can of this Flex Seal spray in case. Uh, I need to just seal something up quick, you know, if I got a little leak around my windshield or something. This will work. I also carry the, uh, the tube of the paste. It's in a squeeze tube like this. It actually works really good. It's like an adhesive. So uh, I don't use it that much, but in a pinch. Get at least one gallon of extra oil I carry with me because buying that stuff in the truck stop is way too expensive. Can of glass cleaner, some kind of glass cleaner. Brake clean for cleaning up, you know, oil mess or whatever. I like this purple power uh, degreaser stuff here. Tell you what, this is a little tip. If you want to get your windshield really clean when you, when you stop the fuel when you, before you wash your windshield, spray it down with this purple power stuff. It takes that bug grease right off. It, uh, it'll scrub a little bit, but once you get it clean the first time, so much easier to clean after that. It does a really good job. Cause you know how that the blood the the guts get from the bugs. They they get a little greasy. I carry a couple gallons of antifreeze. So you know how old trucks are. They leak a little bit of antifreeze. A couple tubes of chassis grease. Also use that for fifth wheel grease. A couple sections of extra wiring uh, for various things. Different gauges. 
I carry one or two of these charge air hoses. Or anytime I replace mine, I keep the old one just for a spare in the truck because blowing one of these, if you got one, you just pop a new one on. No need to call for help or anything because you blow one of those and your truck is going to have a hard time getting down the road. Along those lines too, anytime I change my charge air clamps, I keep the old ones just for that purpose. Uh, they'll foot the bill. I keep a couple extra V-band clamps. These are for exhaust. This one's off the back of the turbo to the S-pipe, and this one is, oh, I think comes off the pressure side going to the, to the charge air. Another charge air clamp, another charge air clamp. Some extra amber turn signal bulbs. Uh, I keep a couple of these. Or anytime I change them, I keep my old ones. These are studs for the battery terminals. In case you have one come loose and you lose it or something. Some extra bolts and hardware in here. Washers. Anytime I change a bolt or something, if it's still good, I throw it in this coffee can. I got an assortment of, of bolts and washers and nuts in here. Even a few new ones here. Uh, be surprised how handy they come in. Uh, putty knife or something. You got a few of these airline separators in case your airlines on your trailer are rubbing and chafing or are going to drag. Keep about a half dozen extra lug nuts. I got these foam things here with a this ain't the right bolt, but I got a bolt that goes through them. These are for plugging the drain holes in the reefer floor, if I need to do that. So there's just an assortment of different uh, nuts and bolts and washers and stuff in here. <clears throat> I got a couple, carry a couple boxes of these, <coughs> excuse me, I carry a couple boxes of these fuses, assorted sizes. I carry an extra glad hand here along with a fitting in case I want to hook up an air hose or something, but this will also hook up to uh, your brake lines. I can adapt it a couple different ways. We saw that already. Uh, <laughs> I carry an extra turn signal switch because these freight liners like I drive are notorious for having these switches go out. And I always keep my old one because I can rob parts off it. Like the high beam switch, I already robbed it off of this one. Those things go bad. And uh, you can't buy them just individually, but I can take it off an old one here. So, carry, uh, always carry my old one of those. This is an alternator belt for my reefer. And I do carry the two other belts, but I keep them in the trailer. Uh, extra serpentine belt. Uh, this one's new. This No, this one's new. This is the one I took off the truck last. I don't know why I keep two of them. I just do. Out of habit. Call me paranoid, whatever. This is an extra suspension leveling valve. I keep one of those because if you saw my video on my suspension rebuild, at one point I was going through these like, like water because I had some problems. This is an extra receiver dryer for my air conditioning. I don't know why I keep that in the truck. I I used to carry my manifold gauges in a in a pump so I could do my own AC work right in the parking lot if I needed to, but I, like I said, I had to scale back my tools I keep in the truck. Ah, uh, this is an extra air filter for the reefer. I also got a oil filter and a fuel filter in the truck that I forgot to take out. Bungee cords, these can be handy. Well, if you hit a deer or something or need to bungee up a bumper to get you home. This is a piece of exhaust flex pipe. I probably don't need to keep that in the truck. Along with some clamps for this exhaust flex pipe. I think I'll leave those at home. I always carry at least one extra cabin air filter. In case I just out of the blue one day notice my air conditioning isn't blowing that good. That's the first thing I always check. Uh, one day I had to replace my serpentine belt tensioner, so I keep the old one 
it's it's marginal yet uh it would you know work in a pinch to get me somewhere to get a new one because on these older detroits those uh are known to be an issue occasionally now i have this big tool bag here I'm just gonna show it to you actually what it is is this is for fishing this is kind of like a tackle box it's got all kinds of pockets in it and then inside is these trays so i'm going to show you what's in these trays because it's pretty doggone handy the way i have this set up here if i need an extra doodad or something chances are i got it and and over the course of time i've been able to help a couple people out with different uh fittings and stuff so we'll just kind of go through here all right saw this micro torch i got black rtvs uh silicone blue rtv these are some extra led turn signal bulbs somebody gave me i have a few valve stem cores in here several extra headlights extra marker light for a trailer this is a thread sealant for bolts and stuff and then this is the opposite this is anti-seize dielectric grease i like to use that in uh, various different electrical fittings even some of the bulbs turn signal bulbs and stuff i got an older truck and things don't seal up quite tight anymore so a little dielectric grease never hurt here's a little more thread sealant this little push connect airline connector I need to get some more of those. I've used some. Another one here. Zip ties. We already saw those. Some sheet metal screws. Need those once in a while. Uh, these rubberized clamps here for, for clamping up uh, hoses or pipes or something. I carry a few of those. And here's some smaller ones. I like that rubber coating on them. It keeps them from rubbing. Here's some more self-tapping sheet metal screws. You've already seen these screwdrivers here in another video. Here is some small size, just some small size nuts, washers. Okay. I have a whole assortment of different size cotter pins like this. Carabiners. I don't know why I have all these in here. To I don't know why I have all these in here to tell you the truth. I don't need that many. But hose clamps. You can never have enough hose clamps. And these are good ones, not crappy Chinese ones. Assorted size hose clamps from big to small. Okay. And then grease zerks. Various different assorted size grease zerks. Don't really need to carry those in the truck. There ain't a grease zerk that's critical that couldn't wait till I get home. But you know, if you're sitting somewhere on a long break or a layover or something, might as well make use of your time. Let's see what's in here. Okay, different size nuts and fittings, washers, um, a little eyelet screw, some extra glad hand rubbers couple more assorted nuts and bolts and washers this is a drain plug from where I hooked up my bypass filter so if something happens to those lines I can just disconnect them and plug off the port here's the one from the other end this is the end off the oil cooler the other one's off the oil pan some wing nuts just some more assorted nuts washers this petcock here came off a coolant pipe it's a bleeder line for the upper radiator pipe had to replace that some more of these uh, rubberized loom clamps and then some of these I think they're called a constant pressure clamp what's neat about these is you see the slats for tightening but on the inside they're smooth so these work nice on silicone hose they won't cut them and I got some assorted different sizes of those see what's in here more of those airline spacers quite a few more hose clamps 
looks like I got plenty of hose clamps. Some smaller size machine screws. And then some of these anchors, the washers. Um, a whole bunch of these clips and these little Torx head screws. These are the kind of screws and clips that are in your dashboard and your visor and all that stuff, your steps that hold everything together. They just go into here. Uh, really hate this design, but the truck is full of those things. If you get stuff rattling and whatever, a lot of times you can just tighten them things. We got a bunch of stuff in here. All right, staples for my stapler. Uh, trailer license plate marker light. Some more headlights. I have a couple extra relays for my fuse box. More turn signals, more headlights. Another marker light. And then I got a whole bunch of various sizes of these heat shrink butt connectors. Here's another box of fuses. A bunch of these uh, jeepers. Pass through valve stem caps. More relays. So all this little stuff here, I use a fair bit of it. Because like I said, my truck is older. And I guess the older your truck gets, the more stuff you need to carry to, to make sure everything is in good order. Uh, you might say this is a lot of stuff to carry, a lot of crap, but guess what? It keeps my truck in good mechanical order and stuff like that, which is important. And it makes it viable to keep running an older truck, you know, it's cheaper to fix it a lot of times. And then just uh, a couple power steering filters. And that's pretty much it for parts and supplies. Let me just take a look here. Yeah, that's about it for parts and supplies. So I hope you found that helpful and, and uh, maybe there's something. Of all the things I carry that I find the most useful for parts and supplies, number one would be fuses. And then these all these smalls here, the hose clamps, the butt connectors, stuff like that. And then clamps are probably the things I find the most helpful because you can you know, a lot of times you can cobble whatever it is together to just get yourself home. So anyway, I hope that was helpful to you and hope you liked the video. And we will catch you next time.